Good morning, everyone. I'm Sumedhi Rathan, and I'm going to present Cognitive Development Theory by Eva Price. And my moderator is Dr. Prasad. Eva Price was a widely renowned child psychologist and genetic epistemologist. His work focused on the cognitive development of human knowledge. Piaget, in his work, tried the cognitive development stages, emphasized the way children think and acquire knowledge. Piaget divided co cognitive development into four stages, from birth to two years, sensory motor stage, from two to seven years, stage of pre-operational thought, stage, stage of concrete operations from seven to 11 years, and from 11 years to end of adolescence, stage of formal operations. Piaget explained that children go through these stages by a mechanism called adaptation. Adaptation is a process by which individuals build mental representations of the world through direct interaction with it. It, is, uh, it has two components, assimilation and accommodation. Assimilation is our tendency to fit new information into existing mental frameworks, and accommodation is our tendency to alter existing concepts in response to new information. For example, a child is being told that this husky is a dog, and the child builds a concept that a furry four-legged animal with a tail is called a dog. Then child sees a golden retriever and uses the same concept to call it a dog. This is known as assimilation. The child then sees a cat and uses assimilation to call it a dog, but is corrected by, a, by his parents that it is a cat. So to on, incorporate this new information, the child makes changes in the pre-existing concept that not all furry, -legged, furry four-legged animals with tail are called dogs, some are called cats. In the, in the first stage, yes. it is the uh, tension between these two components that fosters adaptation and cognitive development. In first stage called sensory motor stage, children begin to learn through sensory observation and gain control of their motor functions through activity, exploration, and manipulation of the environment. It is further divided into six sub-stages. In first substage, infant uses inborn motor and sensory reflexes to interact with the external world. Infants' visual, spatial, and tactile worlds expand through this period. In the second stage, in the second substage, primary circular reaction, infant experiences an event or an action and then attempts to repeat the action. Infant learns to coordinate activities of his own body and five senses. The reality for the infant remains subjective at this stage. In the third substage, infant repeats an action with a specified desired consequence called secondary circular reaction. It marks the beginning of intentional behavior. That is, the child starts to anticipate consequences of his own behavior. The child seeks new stimuli from the environment. In the fourth substage, use of familiar means to obtain ends. It entails deliberate planning of steps to meet a goal or objective. Ch uh, infant starts to build vague concept of object prominence and also imitates novel behaviors. In the stage of tertiary circular reaction and discovery through active experimentation, child seeks new experiences. Experiment with the environment using properties of one object to manipulate another. Example using a stick to push a ball that then makes a noise, which is an interest, interesting reaction to the child. And thus the child produces novel behaviors by himself. In the sixth substage, uh, sorry, sixth substage is characterized by development of insight. Sub, uh, symbolic thought, that is infant is able to create visual images of an object, example a ball to signify the real object. Child also attains object prominence that is ability to understand that objects have existence independent of the child's involvement with them. It is for this reason that children who have not attained object permanence suffer from separation anxiety. This marks the transition to second stage, pre-operational thought. Uh, in this stage, children use, children use the symbols and languages in a more elaborate way. They start to draw and thinking and reasoning are intuitive at this stage. They have no sense of cause or effect. 
So if a child drops a glass and it breaks, he believes that the glass was ready to break, not that he broke the glass. The child is unable to think logically and cannot deal with moral dilemmas, although they have a sense of what is good or bad. Concept, concepts at this stage are primitive. Therefore, in situations where we need to explain them things which are complex, role playing works better than uh, verbal explanations. Development at this stage is egocentric. They are unable to take the role of another person or understand the point of view of the other person. For example, if a child is asked to be quiet so that his brother can study, the child won't listen because he can't understand his brother's perspective. Child also develop a kind of magic, magical thinking called phenomenalistic casualty. Events, that is, events that occur together are thought to cause one another. For example, thunder causes lightning because they occur together. They also develop animistic thinking, a uh, tendency to endow objects with lifelike psychological attributes like feelings or intentions. For example, child believes uh, stars twinkle because they are happy. They also have semiotic function, uh, developed semiotic function, that is child can represent an object or an event that is not present by means of another object that is present which is called a signifier. For example, a child, child draws stick figures to represent different members of his family and uses pencil as a plane or to play with. In the stage of concrete operations, egocentric thought is replaced by operation, operational thought. Uh, the child can now see things with someone else's perspective. The child can serialize or categorize things into classes based on common characteristics. They have syllogistic reasoning, that is, they, can, they come to a con, uh, logical conclusion based on two given premises. For example, all horses, if we tell a child all horses are mammals and all mammals are warm blooded, they can come to a conclusion that all horses are warm blooded. At this stage, uh, children develop respect for rules and an understanding that there are legitimate exceptions to the rules. But some children may become overly invested in the rules and may show uh, obsessive com compulsive behavior, while some children may resist rules and may seem to be uh, willful and reactive. They attain a concept of cause and effect, reversibility, that is, understands that one thing can be turned to another and back again. For example, ice can be converted to water and water. Uh, they also develop conservation ability, uh, quality of conservation, that is ability to recognize that an object, even if its appearance is changed, does not lose the characteristics that enable it to be called the same. Absence of this ability is characteristic of pre-operational stage. Here's an example which shows the absence of conservation. The teacher uh, divides the cracker into two and uh, another cracker into two and give one part to the child and two parts to herself. Then ask the child uh, which one, uh, who is it fair and the division is fair. The child says no. So the teacher divides the uh, child's cracker into two. Now, when she asks if the division is fair, the child says yes, because the teacher has two and he himself has got two. In the stage of, for, uh, in the stage of formal operations, thinking uh, operates in a highly logical, systematic, and symbolic manner. It is characterized by ability to think abstractly. This newly acquired ability may result in uh, adolescents being overly abstract about things, leading to confusion or uncertainty, which is normal at this stage. Language use at this stage is complex and the child is able to follow rules of grammar. The uh, child develops hypodeductive thinking, which is the highest organization of cognition, which enables a person to make hypothesis and test, this, test it against reality. It has two parts, deductive reasoning and inductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning, uh, in this the child takes a general information and applies it to a particular testable idea. 
then deduces a solution through reasoning and logic. While in inductive reasoning, uh, while inductive reasoning involves taking an idea and formulating a general hypothesis. Not all adolescents enter the stage of formal operations at the same time or to the same degree. Some may not reach at all and may remain in concrete operational stage throughout their life. Even adults under stress may regress cognitively as well as emotionally, and their thinking may become pre-operational, egocentric, and sometimes animistic. Piaget's work uh, uh, formed one of the foundations of cognitive revolutions in psychology. An increasing emphasis was given on cognitive components of therapeutic endeavors. Cognitive therapy focuses on thought, including a person's automatic assumptions, <coughs> beliefs, plans, and intentions. It has been effective treatment to problems like depression, anxiety disorder, and substance abuse by assisting uh, to identify maladaptive thoughts and then trying to make amends on a cognitive level. Piaget's uh, work form the basis of James Eunice's James Unice, theory of children's concept of other people and Lawrence Kohlberg's model of moral reasoning as well. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, today, I am Dr. Tatsuya Agarwal. Uh, is going to present on the topic addiction stages of psychosocial development, and my moderator is Dr. Tanya Gur. So, uh, a word about Eric Erikson. So, Eric Erikson was an ego psychologist who created an original and highly influential theory of psychosocial development and the crisis occurring in the periods that ex uh, extend across the entire life cycle. So he identified dilemmas or polarities in the ego's relationship with families and larger social institutions at nodal points in childhood, adolescence, and early, middle, and late adulthood. So rather than starting within, uh, within the nervous system of an individual, as Sigmund Freud has done, so he focused on the boundary between the childhood and the environment, and he graphed the evolution of the maturing ego's relationships with the expanding social world. So uh, his theory was based upon epigenetic principle. Actually, it is a term that has been derived from embryology. So epigenetic principle holds that development occurs in sequentially clearly defined stages, that each stage must be satisfactorily resolved for the next stage to uh, proceed smoothly. So according to this model, if successful resolution of particular stage does not occur, all the subsequent stages will reflect that failure in form of physical, cognitive, social, or emotional maladjustment. So what does his theory exactly entail? So unlike Freud's theory of psychosexual stages, Erickson's theory described the impact of social experience across the whole life cycle of the individual. So he was interested in how social interactions and relationships they played role in the development of the human being. Uh, so these are the uh, stages of development. So we start from the infancy and go to uh, maturity. So uh, in infancy, uh, trust versus mistrust, child may develop autonomy versus shame and doubt in early childhood. In preschool, there may be initiative versus guilt. In school age, industry versus inferiority. Adolescence, identity versus role confusion. Young adulthood, intimacy versus isolation. Middle adulthood, generativity versus stagnation. And maturities, ego integrity versus despair. So we'll take up each and every stage in detail. Uh, before that, there is a conflict during each stage. So in each Erickson stage, there arrives a point 
where either an individual can fail or can successfully clear that stage. So at this point is the uh, most uh, crucial point of a stage where the chances of success are very high and the chances of failure are also very high. So as the Erickson's theory, it builds upon the preceding stages and it paves the way for the next uh, stages. So in his view, the conflicts are centered either on developing a psychosocial quality or failing to develop that quality. And what happens when an individual masters that quality? So it leads to ego strength, right? So at each stage, there is a goal to become competent in that stage. So each stage is concerned with becoming competent in, a, in his life. So if the stage is handled well, the person will feel a sense of mastery, which is sometimes referred to as ego strength. So if managed poorly, the person will uh, emerge with a sense of inadequacy in aspect of learning. So uh, talking about the first stage, trust versus mistrust. So it uh, takes place during infancy. At this point of time, the child is largely dependent upon his caretakers. So during the first stage of development, children develop a sense of trust when caregivers they provide reliability, care and affection. A lack of this will lead to mistrust. So if a child successfully develops trust in the uh, 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 trust, the child will feel safe and secure in the world. So the caregivers who are emotionally unavailable, who do not provide tender loving care and they reject the child's feeling, this will lead to seeding of mistrust in the child. So according to Erickson, no child is going to develop 100% trust or mistrust. It is just about striking the balance between the two opposites. So when this happens, a ch uh, the children, they acquire hope. So the next stage is uh, autonomy versus shame or doubt. So it takes place during early childhood and it is focused on children developing a sense of personal control. So now here comes the role of independence. Uh, we let child to take small decisions by themselves, like what to eat or not. So this helps to uh, helps the kids to make simple choices and gain control. Caregivers can help children develop autonomy like this. So now this stage also has a role of toilet training. So the sense of this stage is that the children develop a sense of personal control over their physical skills and a sense of independence. Now, too rigorous toilet training can lead to overly compulsive personality that is thingy, meticulous and selfish, being too uh, clean, too punctual. So this will lead to obsessive personalities. Too much shaming will lead to children may feel dirty and they may pave path to delinquent behavior. Now, if the first stage is also not resolved, this will lead to uh, mistrust and will lead to persecuted delusions along with uh, conflict uh, not resolved in second stage as So achieving a balance between autonomy and self-doubt will lead to will, which is believed that the children can act with intention, within reason and limits. So the next stage is initiative versus guilt, which takes place during preschool years. So at this point of time, the children will begin to assert their power and control on the outside world through directing play and other social interactions. So if a, children, uh, if a child who is successful during this stage will feel capable to lead others. And those who fail to acquire these skills will be left with a sense of guilt and self-doubt. There will be lack of initiative. So when an ideal balance of individual initiative and willingness is achieved, the quality that emerges is known as purpose. So the next stage is industry versus inferiority. So this takes place during early school years. So the children, they begin to develop a sense of pride and accomplishments in their actions. So Encouragement by parents and teachers play a very important role here. So if a child is motivated by parents to, if he's getting good marks, he's motivated to get more good marks in the coming time. So he'll work more towards it. If more comparison is made, he may feel inferior than others. He may feel inferior than peers. So this will lead to
so uh, industry versus inferior inferiority so children they need now at this stage children need to cope with new social and academic demands as well so the success will lead to competence whereas failure will lead to a sense of inferiority as i told that encouragement by the parents and teachers it plays a very important role so successfully finding a balance at this stage will lead to strength that is known as competence in which the children they develop a belief in their abilities to handle the tasks set before them so the next stage is identity versus confusion which takes place during adolescence and teenage years so it plays a role in development of personal identity which is going to influence individual's behavior for the rest of its life so success will lead to strong sense of self and feelings of independence and control and failure will lead to development of an insecurity and confusion about future and oneself now what is this identity so identity refers to all the beliefs and ideals and values that help to shape and guide a person's behavior so completing this stage leads to fidelity now fidelity is described as an ability to live by so society's expectations so our personal identity gives us a sense of integrative and cohesive sense of self that endures us through the life identity is shaped by interactions with others and experiences which in turn guides our action and beliefs and behaviors as we age so the next stage is intimacy versus isolation which takes place during uh, young adulthood so at this time uh, adults they explore their relationships so young adults need to uh, form intimate loving relationships with other people success will lead to a strong relationship whereas failure will lead to loneliness and isolation so this stage covers the period of early adulthood when people are exploring personal relationships now for this stage to occur successfully the uh, the stage 5 of role uh, confusion should not be there so each step builds upon the previous step a sense of a strong personal identity is important for developing intimate relationships so successful relationship of this stage will result in a virtue known as love so it is marked by ability to form long lasting meaningful relationships with other people so this uh, relationship will carry on to the next stage that is known as generativity versus stagnation where a couple uh, they uh, they uh, nurture or create the things that will outlast them so this takes place during middle adulthood so adults need to create or nurture things that will outlast them often by having children or creating a positive change that will benefit others so during adulthood we continue to build our lives focus on career and family we we uh, try to save money we try to uh, build home for our children we uh, watch our children grow so those who succeed feel that they are contributing something to the world by being active in home and community and those who fail, uh, fail they feel unproductive and uninvolved in the world so care is the virtue that is achieved uh, by this uh, when the stage is handled successfully being proud of one's own accomplishments and what children grow in adults are important accomplishment at this stage so uh, we proceed to the last stage that is integrity versus despair which takes place in the old age so it is focus on reflecting back into the life now at this point of time the time has gone the chances are lost so either they can feel a sense of accomplishment sense of satisfaction or they'll feel despair they'll feel a sense of bitterness so success is that when those people who look back at their life and events will feel proud of their accomplishments and feel a sense of integrity that everything they did they contributed to home and society their children are well settled they'll face the death with wisdom as well uh, they're ready for easy disintegration failure will lead to uh, regrets that in their lives they will have a sense of despair and bitterness so this is the summary of all the stages uh, and what would you uh, uh every stage will uh, lead to development thank you um any questions about the baptism Yeah. 
tasks or domains is it so so uh, yes uh, but uh, if we take the difference between fraud and uh, erickson fraud mainly uh, focused on uh, neurological development yes the stages can regress obviously but there is a set stone ki ha ye stage agar conflict resolve ho gaya he will get that virtue but abuse hoga to he will develop mistrust but not as concrete as in that stage so it may be resolved it may be resolved so then person might not do the prior stages. prior stages yes This is what looking at so I don't think so that uh, people have looked at it. Maybe you see the next level case development is more like new. No. I also feel like that the stages are progressing very quickly. The thing is that ki early adulthood ki stages are shifting to no, adolescence. Uh, Uh, for future generations to come. Saving money means psychodynamically you want to save money. Because <laughs> not any way written to your It's not a system saving. Or this is something about the family. <laughs> I feel that you know people are giving impurity share all the complexities confusing the audience. You need to give a linear you know, a kind of an, uh, uh, display where they take some take-home messages. So they are very clear. You know, they have some the, the, it have the assimilations become more clear. So in that sense, I think congratulations to both of you. 
exceptional presentation. I think one of the best presentations. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give it to both now very deservedly, and your monitors will take it up in separate Country is in safe hands, very safe. They both were there for the video. They didn't make an excuse for our presentation. Good, very good. So thank you. Thank you. Our case conference is the chairperson. First of all, one person will be able to do it. Two people will be able to do it. Thank uh -huh. 